This iTransfuse podcast is based on fact sheets you can find at transfusion.com.au, the Australian Red Cross Blood Service website for health professionals. I donate whole blood. Does that same bag of blood end up in the hospital? Good question. Whole blood is rarely used for a transfusion. When a whole blood donation is collected, it can be split into its three different components, red blood cells, plasma and platelets. By doing this, a whole blood donation can be used to help three different patients. Why is blood split into three components? This way, each patient gets the component they need, but not the components they don't. For example, one patient could receive the platelets, another the plasma, and someone else could receive the red cells. How is the blood split three ways? After the whole blood has been collected at the donor centre, it goes to our processing laboratory. After a number of checks to make sure the product is suitable, the whole blood is spun in a centrifuge. What is the purpose of the centrifuge? By centrifuging the whole blood, the red cells go to the bottom of the pack while the plasma goes to the top. This is because the plasma is lighter than the red cells. The white cells and the platelets stay in the middle and this is called the buffy coat layer. So then what happens next? An automated machine is then used to remove the layers. The plasma layer at the top is pushed by the automated machine into another bag, while the red cells at the bottom are also pushed into a different bag. This leaves just the buffy coat layer in the middle. These three components are then ready for further processing into plasma products, red cells and platelets. They also get tested along the way to make sure they are free of serious viruses and bacteria. So a whole blood donation can be turned into three products? Well actually, even more than three products can be made. Plasma alone can make numerous different products. How can plasma make so many products? Not all plasma is used for transfusion. It can also be sent to CSL where it is fractionated to make other products such as immunoglobulin, clotting factors and albumin and then returned into the healthcare system. Why do we need different products? Each blood component has a particular clinical benefit. Often patients only require a particular component not necessarily all of them. Could you give us an example of why a patient would need each of the components? Okay, so for example, a patient being treated for cancer is likely to really need platelets because their own platelets are affected by chemotherapy. Alternatively, a patient suffering from liver disease will only require products from the plasma component as people with liver disease do not make enough clotting factors. A patient may require a red cell transfusion if they have lost a large amount of blood from trauma, such as a motor vehicle accident. By splitting whole blood into its components, we maximise the benefit of a precious resource while achieving beneficial outcomes for each patient. The fact sheets and podcasts are designed to provide basic information 